guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Heart of Amethyst. So guys, let's go ahead and jump right back in. This is this is Almond's Path. All right, 18 minutes. All right, I'm ready when you guys are. Let's just jump right back in, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's friggin' go. All right, let's do it. <clears throat> okay. Got my coffee next to me. I'm ready to make some content for you guys. Uh, we'll leave tomorrow morning, and then we'll join the king for dinner the day after tomorrow. That means we'll stay at the. That means we'll stay at an inn. Alma takes the letter and inspects it. He taps on the seal a few times, probably to check that no one has opened it. Then he scratches his chin, looking deep in thought as he does so. Mate, don't take this the wrong way, but is there something you're not telling me? I mean, if, if this letter is important, he would either he would either send one of his personal butlers, not you. He would either he would either send one of his personal butlers, not you. And the fact that he's given you a whole day to deliver a letter. It sounds that it sounds to me that he wants you there for he wants you there. And this it's just an excuse for that. The wolf crosses his arms and then offers me a worried look. So spill the beans, mate. But what? Almost, almost. This isn't a word from the king. Oh, I know, but the old man has always been a tricky one, and I hate to be left out in the dark. So if you want me to help you, better then you better. So if you want me to help you, better trust me with this, okay? I'm honestly out of words, so I just remain silent. I didn't know he was this perceptive. He figured there was something going on in seconds. And now he wants to tell me every now he wants me to tell him everything. That would mean telling him about But can I really just can I really trust him with that information? And what if he betrays me later? He could easily turn on me when and use the information to his advantage. Could he really do that? Is he that kind of person? Now that I think about it, I really don't know much about him. Maybe I am being paranoid, but you can never be too sure. I carefully hand I'll carefully handpick what I tell him. That should keep me safe and satisfy his need for information. Yeah, you got me. There's another reason for this trip. You see, the king needs me to find out what this is. In a swift move, I take the metal from the bed and toss it at him. He catches it without a problem and lifts it in the air, inspecting it closely. Why would that old man care about this rusty thing? That he didn't say, but trust me, that metal is really important. For the both of us. So it's in our best interest to find out what the hell that symbol means. Wolf take, the wolf hasn't taken his eyes off the metal. He moves it around as if that would magically help him understand what it is. I see. Mate, would you think I'm crazy if I told you I've seen this somewhere? As soon as he says that, the front of my neck stands up. I look at him in disbelief, clenching my fists. If he thinks this is a joke, he's got another thing coming. That's impossible. No, it's not. You haven't been around as long as me, mate. This resembles those flashy thingies the high ranks from church always wear. Ugh, I've always hated their guts. I mean, I haven't seen this symbol specifically, but the handcraft of the metal looks like theirs. Can can you confirm this? Yeah, for sure. I got a pretty good look at it when when me and that gut. <clears throat> Actually, never mind. His words pierce through my heart like a dagger. This means there are people that might know what this is, and if I find them, I can, it could lead me to her. This is a ray of hope that I needed. Is there is there a way to talk to one of these high ranks? We could use the king's influence. Alma lifts his pawn, tossing mid-sentence. First, let me tell you that the king's influence ain't worth nothing when it comes to the church. Second, those fancy dicks only come out of the churches once every blue moon. Third, I may know of one of them. I may know of one of them who goes to a bar every night. Fourth, I'll take you to that bar if you promise to have a drink with me. Deal? <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, of course. Yeah, Almond liked that. I bet he did. What the heck? Is this Almond's way of asking me on a date? He doesn't waste an opportunity, does he? One second, guys. Let me sip my coffee. This one is called Black and Rise, I think. Black and Rise. I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> Delicious, though. Are you sure you can get us into that bar? Oh, trust me, mate. As long as you go with me, it'll be all, it'll all be smooth sailing. I offer him the brightest smile that I can offer as he says that. I can also feel my tail wagging like crazy behind me. But I don't care if he notices at that at this point. Thank you so much. You're the best. Yeah, don't sweat it, mate. Anything for a friend. Now, we should both hit the hay, eh? The wolf walks past me and pats me on the shoulder. I turn around to watch him leave, and that's when I notice that his own tail is wagging. Also, is also wagging. He tried to play it cool, but his own body betrayed him. He really is a dork. Meet you before dawn at the port. I say before he closes the door. The sound of the door closing marks the end of the conversation. I remain there, trying to process the happiness I'm feeling. I'm one step closer to knowing the truth. 
And the best part is that I'll have someone as nifty as Almond by my side. Better get better get to bed though. I don't want him to I don't want to make him mad by oversleeping. <laughs> You're late. What? No way. You said at dawn. I said before dawn, you idiot. I've been waiting here for half an hour. I've been freezing my butt off out here waiting for you. I punched his shoulder really hard, hoping to physically and mentally hurt him as much as possible. I revenge for making me wait here in the cold, idiot. My bad, mate. Shall we though? Or would you prefer if I prefer if I heat said ass of yours first? I know a few moves to, pres to preserve the. <laughs> Before he can finish, I step on his foot, making him hiss from the pain. Then I turn around and head into the boat. Goddesses, give me strength. <laughs> the sight of the Great Lake has always captivated me. You can't ever see the end of it, but unlike the sea, you know there is an end to it. Unlike the sea, there are not deadly animals in the lake, so it's safe to take a swim. There are also no killing waves or dangerous whirlpools that will drag you down to the bottom. It's a big and calm friend that has fed many generations of canines and has helped build the city of Yagnir. It feels big, but at the same time, gives you a sensation of ease. There was a time in which I hated it, though. This lake replaced the side of my, of my, of my beloved forest, and the birds soon turned into seagulls. Eventually, like a pesky sibling, it grew on me. Excuse me, it became my home, a place to come and to relax after days of being away, searching for her. I wonder if she's been able to enjoy it as well. I like to think that she does and that she's here in the city. Because if she is, I will find her no matter what. Alright, lad, we'll be touching port soon. Take all your stuff or we take all your stuff with you or I'll sell them myself. You hear? Thank you, Captain. I will. The man nods and then leaves. I, on the other hand, just remain there, mesmerized by the lake. If for just for a little longer, I could freeze this moment. Heh, <laughs> what am I even thinking? I have a whole day ahead of me. Gotta give it my all. We arrived at the 11th hour to Yagner's port, and then it took us an hour to climb from, port, from the port to the high central market. So by the time we made it there, it was as lively as possible. The shops were all filled with people, either trying to buy the ingredients for lunch or lunch itself. That's why there was a delicious mix of aromas in the air. I also noticed the high amount of luxurious shops around. Jewelry stores, bookshops, boutiques and the meat. Boutiques and the meat. Okay. It smells fresh. I like the, I like the one in the lower city. The houses are also a huge shock. They're built in stone rather than wood, and they're incredibly tall. Most houses have two floors, and some even have three. Everything looks cleaner as well. The paths are made of stone and not just dirt. The walls of the houses are nicely kept, and some even smell freshly painted over. There's also a fountain in the middle. The marble looks as white as a cloud, and there is a nicely designed naked woman holding a jar, from which water pours. This is a whole different world. Oh yeah, this is your first time up here, isn't it? Wolf says as he walks up behind me. I turn my eyes to meet his, a silly smile on his face. Coffee time. Mmm. Coffee finished. Delicious. I'm aware of my wagging tail, but I really can't help it. This is such a new and exciting environment. It feels like a dream to finally be up here. So, say something you like? Aside from me, of course. Of course you would say something like that. I roll my eyes at Almond's obvious smirk, deciding to ignore his comment entirely. To be honest, I'm really surprised by how nice all of it looks. It's so... clean. I know, right? I was just as surprised as you were when I came here the first time. But trust me, mate, not all that shines is gold. This place has its dirt as well. All you need to do is know where to dig. I'm unable to fully understand what he means by that, but the wolf just shrugs it off and starts walking. Where are you going? To the end, mate. Let's go. I nod and follow beside him, saying nothing else after that. <laughs> Silly boys. The innkeeper received us with a huge smile as soon as we told him that the king had had a message for him. The old dog assured us that he had been waiting for months to get this letter, and he thanked us kindly for the trouble. To me, he looked like a good man, but there was something weird about his attitude and the whole secrecy of the letter. I don't know, maybe I'm just being too paranoid. Either way, we didn't get much time to meet him properly, as he insisted that there was some cleaning to be done. He told us to come back later after sunset. According to him, he would have our room and a delicious meal ready for us. So with that settled, we now have the rest of the afternoon for us. Almond lets, Almond lets me know that we should probably go eat something first before before the bar opens at night, but I told him that we weren't going today. I mean, we should probably get ready for that, but there is something that I want to do first. I want to meet up with Mr. Biscotti. I need to make sure that the old man is fine, and I want to... 
apologize to him. What happened to your plans for lunch? Meh. It wouldn't be funny with it. It wouldn't be funny without you. You sure? Yeah, it's fine. Besides, I haven't been to the lower city in a while. I should go check on some acquaintances. All right, let's go then. And we shouldn't waste any more time. Uh, the walk down there will take us a while. Of course, lead the way, sexy. <laughs> He's not quite as annoy annoying as Owen. <laughs> The day seems to be a little cloudy, but personally, I don't think it will rain later until tonight. So we should be good. We go through a big gate and then pass a small river that divides the high city from the lower one. The contrast between the two is abysmal. And now that I've seen the other side, I can't help but notice it even more. It angers me a little. But now it's not the time for this. I must focus on what I came here to do. Wow, I haven't been here in ages, man. Almond is walking a few steps ahead of me, seemingly hyped by the fact, that, by the fact of being in the lower city. That's a first. Nope. No normal person would be excited to be in this dump, but whatever suits him. We keep on walking through the dusty streets of the lower city. A few beggars come around and ask us for at least a, co a copper coin, but we didn't bring any, any money with us. So we just ignore them and carry on. You know, the high city might, it might have all these fancy buildings and whatever, but to me, this place feels more like home. Huh? For a king's retainer, you're not very fancy. <laughs> Neither are you. Guess we have that in common. He smiled warmly at me, and I returned his smile with another. He's right. Out of all the people I've met in that fancy fortress, Almond is the one who understands me the most. Same as me, he came from a low environment, although I don't know the specifics. Now that I think about it, I don't really know much about him. What is it like in this town you grew? A little, but it... What is it like... Th Was it like this in the town you grew up in? A little, but it smelled like fish a lot more. And did you grow up in a house like these? I... He stops in his tracks and looks behind his shoulder back at me. It seems like he wants to tell me something, but he just forced himself to stop. I wonder what it was. Of course, very humble houses. And with that said, he just drops the conversation and keeps walking, so I follow. Weird. As we get close to our destination, a sensation in my gut starts to settle. I can't really describe it. It's like a combination of dread, guilt, and excitement. My heart is also starting to beat faster as I'm as I'm not sure what I'm going to tell him. So what? Do I just show up and say, Hey, Mr. Biscotti, sorry for banishing for a month, but I'm fine. Wanna eat pork and drink some beer? Bear? Drink some bear? Yeah, let's have some bear. Bjorn's pretty good. Yeah, great conversation starter, you idiot. Mate, you fine? <laughs> Almond seems to have noticed my distress, placing his gentle hand on my shoulder and keeping his big eyes glued to me. I sigh, looking away from him as I don't want him, as I don't want him to look at me in this sorry state. I'm just nervous. I mean, I haven't seen him in ages, and I just abandoned him. He's probably mad or probably just hates me. Almond stops me in my tracks by placing his other hand on my shoulder. He's currently piercing me with his big green orbs, a severe expression on his face. Now that ain't really fair, is it, mate? You you are here thinking the worst of this man. He's probably worried sick about you. You haven't even given him the chance to speak his mind. Besides, he loves you. There's no, so there's no way he'll hate you. Just don't hate someone like that, especially... You just don't hate someone like that, especially if it's someone you care about. And yes, you hurt him pretty bad. You messed up. But instead of thinking that he hates you, or that your relationship can't be fixed, you should think of a way to apologize to him and fix things. His speech... His speech leaves me without words. I mean, I certainly wasn't expecting a pep talk, and specifically not one from him. Where is this mature and supportive almond all the time? Because I kind of dig the side of him a lot more. Now, come here and give this smelly wolf a hug. And he ruined it. You really are smelly, man. Back off. Oh, come on. I skipped my bath today to be ready on time for our love trip. And you were still late, you idiot. <laughs> I push him aside and open up a path towards the entrance of the shop. He waits behind me. But it seems like he, isn't aban he, it seems like he has abandoned the idea to hug me. The God, thanks to the goddesses. I huff, trying to act grumpy. Meanwhile, the wolf acts as if, he, as if he was a mere innocent kid wanting to give a hug to his friend. As if? Is this it? Looks nice from the outside. Yeah, this is our shop. I stand there, looking at the entrance as if it were some sort of portal to the underworld. Damn, I really am a coward. Well, go ahead. The poor man has waited long enough. Oh, yeah, you're right. You coming? Nope. This is a one. This is a one-man-only adventure. Personal stuff ain't much my thing, anyway. Need a goodbye kiss? I think I'll pass. Thank you, though. <laughs> Don't sweat it, mate. Now get in there. 
I nod and offer him one last smile, then I gulp loudly, deciding to enter the shop once and for all. Let's do it, Leroy Jenkins! It's okay. The first thing I notice as I enter the shop is the smell of dust. Which is weird, because if there is something Mr. Biscotti hates, that would be dust. He's probably been too busy attending to the shop, uh, attending to the shop and buying supplies to even care about cleaning. Hey, old man, I'm back! Sorry for taking so long! I call out for him, but there is no response. Maybe he went out to buy some supplies. But that's weird. Why would he leave the door unlocked then? I take a sniff around, and I notice that I can't smell him. Only his lingering old man scent that has been, in, has been impregnated in this place for years. Impregnated. And now that I look closely, there's a lot of dust and some broken glass on the floor. The books aren't arranged properly, and some important artifacts are missing from the shelves. Someone entered this place, but who and why? More importantly, what happened to the old man? I desperately move around, lifting every single nook and cranny in the shop, trying to find any clue that would allow me to figure out what the hell happened here. But there's nothing, only missing objects. No signs of a struggle. No damage from a... No, no damage from... No damage aside from two bottles on that broke. I keep trying to sniff around, but there are only lingering scents, nothing revealing. Damn it, what happened here? The drawers, the shelves, even under the beds. Nothing. It doesn't matter how hard I try, there's nothing here. Not a single note, a clue, just an empty shop. I'm about to give up, but then... Of course! I say to myself, walking straight for the second cabinet in the wall. I push the heavy object to the side and notice that a secret hiding spot is still there. It's just a hole in the wall, but we use it to store any, any sort of important artifact that we come across. Getting my hand in there, I notice that there's only one thing inside of it. I quickly take it out, noticing that it's a nicely wrapped package with a note attached to it. Inspecting it, it seems to, it seems to be some sort of book, but I'm more interested in the note than, than what came with it. And folding it as fast as I can, I immediately notice that this is Mr. Biscotti's handwriting. It seems to be a letter, and thanks to the goddesses, it is addressed to me. It reads, Ellie, my boy, my only hope is that if you found this letter, you made your way back home, back home safely. I'm sure you're aware of it, but things got out of hand pretty quickly. Some knights came the other day to deliver a letter and some money from you. I'm not sure why you did it, or even how you did it, but I want you to know that I trust you. I'm aware of your goals and aspirations, and I know you're a smart kid, so if becoming the King's Retainer is what, is what you need to accomplish them, then so be it. I'll always have your back, although I wish you would have told me before blowing up an entire house. In any case, I really appreciate the money. I would like to tell you that I will use it to improve the shop, but given the circumstances, it seems like I will have to use it for another trip to the forest. You see, a few days after you left, I spotted a few cloaked figures inspecting the shop, had been there three times already in one day. One of them came in asking how, asking a few questions about you. Of course, I didn't talk. And now I worry about my safety. And so I'm leaving the shop tonight. I'll go to our recorded destination and wait for you there. I'll dig out the heart, the heart and keep it safe. If I must, I'll throw it into, into the sea as we agreed. I'll wait for you in there as long as I need to. But please, ease this old man's worries and send me a letter with someone you trust. And don't you dare worry about me. we will be fine. You take care of yourself, and for the love of the goddesses, stay safe. You're all I have left, and I don't want to lose you too, boy. Love you, kiddo. Petey, you never told me what you wanted for your birthday, so I got you a new travel diary. I'm sure you'll live a lot of new adventures. I'm sure you'll live a lot of new adventures from now on. So make sure you write them all here, and so I can read them once we meet again. I'll save it right here. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!